Hello, class. Franklin Pierce was the only president we've ever had from the state of New Hampshire. Franklin Pierce was born November 23rd, 1804. He died October 8th, 1869. As I said, his home state was New Hampshire. By a matter of religion, he was, Epis he was Episcopal. Uh, so he, like many people of his, his time, uh, was a veteran of the Mexican-American War. As a matter of family, he had his wife, Jane Pierce. And I'll circle back to her because they had a very sad situation. Um, and he is going to be a Democrat. His party. His term of office is March 4th, 1853 to March 4th, 1857. So, on his career, okay, um, he is first elected to the State House in New Hampshire. And then he becomes their Speaker of the House before he's elected to be a House member for the U.S. from New Hampshire and later a Senator. Before later, he will become a uh, compromise candidate, kind of surprise one, uh, for the Democrats in 1852 when he wins that election. So things are going pretty well for Franklin Pierce. Okay, he is the youngest president up to that point, elected. Uh, he's thought to be very outgoing, he's thought to be handsome. A lot of people would describe him as handsome at the time, but then he is beset by tragedy. Okay, so his only son that survives to a decent age, Benjamin, is killed in a training accident prior to his inauguration. And, um, like, he actually witnessed his son die in a very horrible way, right before his eyes. So that put a cloud on his presidency. Uh, his... Wife is going to be in mourning as a, as a mother, and Jane Pierce is basically going to not do her job as first lady. Then, his vice president is William Rufus King, and he's super sick. And so, he's sent down to the Caribbean to try to make himself feel better. They get special permission to give him the oath of office uh, outside the country. And... Then he dies one month into the term. So Frank Capish loses his son. He loses his vice president. His wife is in terrible state of sadness. And Franklin Pierce turns to alcohol and is drunk for large parts of his presidency. Now, like many of these men here during this period of time, the issue of the day is slavery. And what he does is kick the can down the road. Okay, his predecessor had signed the Fugitive Slave Act. Here, he's going to sign the Kansas-Nebraska Act. It's going to lead to the fighting of bleeding Kansas. Okay, um, and which the country still tear itself apart getting closer to civil war, he does nothing to really help this. Um, he's going to survive into past the civil war, um, but he is usually ranked among one of the worst presidents and one of the most forgettable ones. And it's just a really sad story because he seems to have a lot going for him, very promising career. And that just a series of tragedies after his greatest triumph, the victory, okay? The literal losing of his son, of his vice president, and then essentially losing his wife as well, um, self to alcoholism. So Franklin Pierce, one of the more obscure presidents he will not run for re-election no one's going to want him to run for re-election and most people don't know him today however he will be succeeded 
by someone that is normally ranked one of the worst presidents, which is James Buchanan.